The King in Number Sign FFFF00 by Rob Harper. I guess I should explain who I am and how I got into the situation. I'm a hacker. Yeah, I know when you hear about that, you assume I'm a bad guy, but I'm not, mostly. I try and hack only big corporations who can afford it, and I do a lot of hacktivism. Of course, it's only wrong if you get caught. It's my motto, so really, any moral judgments will have to be left to the side. Anyway, I do jobs for anonymous people who contact me. I don't ask questions, and I make a tidy living. Nothing too grand, just enough to keep my one-bedroom apartment and a vacation once a year. It's like a real job. Just a real job I could go to prison for. It was like any other day. I was in between jobs, and I hadn't had one in a while. And I needed to work to pay the rent. Maybe I wasn't as choosy as I would have been regularly when the job came up. I was talking on the phone with my mother, only half listening when I got the email. Yes, mother, I know. Uh Uh-huh. I'm sure he's very nice, but... No, I'm not going to die alone, mother. It was at this point I tuned out. The email came in as they always do. No return Addy. Just a program with instructions on it and what to do with it. It was a simple botnet hack. Easy. But the money they were paying was astronomical. That should have alerted me, but as I said I needed cash quick, so I shot back an email, equally anonymous, saying I'd take the job. That'll teach me not to follow my gut reaction. So the job was to inject the provided program into its botnet of infected computers, which would run the program at the specific time. They wanted it done at midnight on December 21st. Tomorrow. It would literally take me half an hour to do the job, and would pay the rent for a few months. Of course I got curious. I had to see what the program did. I glance at my window, and I see a few people standing around, looking up at my building. I live in the city, and you see lots of weird stuff, so I just ignored them. I unpacked the program and looked it over. It didn't make much sense at first. Lots of strange code and audio and video files to be run. The pictures were a lot of weird symbols. I clicked on one of the audio files. I turned it off quickly. Someone was spending a lot of cash to scare about a million people as their computers started spitting the stuff out. I kept looking, and the words King in Yellow and Hastor came up a lot. Hastor. I jumped at the sound of someone banging on my door, probably the landlord looking for his rent. He likes me, so I could sweet-talk him into giving me a week for the money transfer for the job to clear. I got up and answered the door, without even looking to see who it was. I opened the door, and instead of my landlord, there was a weird-looking homeless guy standing there. I nearly screamed. Have you read The King in Yellow? What? How did you... I regained my senses enough to start to slam the door on the creep. He stopped the door with his hand, and this is when I saw the tattoo on his wrist. It was one of those strange symbols I'd seen on the program. A three-spoke squiggly, with one looking like a question mark. I threw myself at the door, and it finally shut and I quickly hit all my locks. I thought about calling the cops, or at least my landlord, but when I looked out the peephole, the weird guy was gone. It took me a few minutes to calm down. My heart raced as fast as my mind. How the hell did that guy know about the program? It couldn't be a coincidence. It's not like the name King in Yellow is something you come across every day. Had my security been breached? Was that the guy who hired me? He didn't look like the kind of person who had that kind of money, but you never know. I once again glanced out of the window, and now there were more of them out there, looking up. And they weren't just looking at my building, they were looking up at my window. I had to call someone. This was getting too spooky for me. I had one friend who knew about this kind of stuff. Chuck would know what to do. I Skyped him, hoping he would be home. I was ecstatic when his face popped up on my computer screen. What's up, Buttercup? Chuck! Thank God! I've got myself into some weird shit here. Calm down. What's happening? I explained everything, and sent him the files and told him about the tattoo and everything else I knew. Settle down, babe. I'll get back to you ASAP. I wish I could just come over. Chuck was a nice guy, and maybe in another life we might have been something. But it was not meant to be. He lived about a thousand miles away, and I think he was gay, but that was besides the point. He signed off to do some research, and I started to go through the program's code to try and make some sense of it, mostly to keep my mind off the freaks outside. I had a gift with code. It just made sense to me. Some people might have even called it a superpower, but I just didn't think of it much. The more I stared at the program, the more it started to make sense. 
After a few hours, my mind was reeling and Chuck rang back. Please tell me you have something. Uh, yeah, I got something. What the hell did you get yourself into? Please, I know. Just tell me. Well, you've heard of Cthulhu, right? Come on, of course I have. We all dream, don't we? Yeah, well, Haster's like Cthulhu, but by all accounts worse. Hell, just saying his name is bad news. They usually call him He Who Shall Not Be Named, or the King in Yellow. His followers are known by that symbol you saw on that guy's wrist. It's called the Yellow Sign. There's a book called The King in Yellow. Please tell me you haven't read it. Does it come in an audiobook? They tried to make one, but all the actors kept going insane. This book is dangerous. Everyone who reads it goes insane or joins the cult. Scary stuff. I don't know what that program does, but erase it. I have a friend who knows Doc Odd. Maybe we can get him to help. It's okay, Chuck. I think it's all making sense now. I know what I have to do. No, this isn't a game. You have to- I hang up on him. It all makes sense now. I know what the program is. It was a summoning spell of some sort, which when run on the botnet, millions of computers will chant for Haster's return. Also, it provides some kind of power to all those with the yellow sign. I know the programming language now. I know what I can do, and I have about 15 hours to do it. I rewrite the code all day long. The cultists are outside, but they have no idea what I have planned. This better work, or I might be co-signing the world to hell. Or worse. Oh well, it's only wrong if you get caught. I finished with an hour to spare. I poke my head out the window and give the weirdos the thumbs up. They don't react, but at least I hope I got their hopes up. I upload my program to the botnet and wait. Chuck's been trying to call me all day. Maybe if the world isn't taken over by a pan-dimensional being of immense evil, I'll go visit him. If this works, I'll need a vacation. Midnight and the program goes off. I put it on my computer to see how it goes. The effects are immediate. I hear the roar of something big in the sky filled with yellow. I see all manner of powers flying around to see what's up. They can't save the day. Only I can. There is a flash and explosion. The second half of the spell kicks into effect. Haster screams in rage and pain, and I think I've made an enemy of a great old one. Then there are screams of all those with the yellow sign. I look outside and see all the freaks writhing in agony. This part of the spell worked better than I expected. Before my eyes, the cultists melt into pools of protoplasm. Oops, I just wanted them to run away. Oh well. Soon, nothing is left to them but piles of dirty clothes and black goo. That confused the authorities for days, as they kept finding these pools everywhere. Some prominent people, too. What can I say? When I defeat an evil horde of cultists, I go all out. So there you have it. So that's how I defeated a god and its minions with a computer program. Over time, I've discovered a few new tricks. I guess you could say I'm a technology magic user now. Hmm. Technomage. I like the sound of that. The end. If I wanted to support an independent radio program, how would I go about doing that? Buying their swag. And how would I go about buying their swag? I would visit the website. And what is that website, Rob Harper? Cafepress.com slash Vinland Old Time Radio. It would be LemonParty.com. No, it's <laughs> Cafepress.com slash Vinland Old Time Radio. I'm pretty sure. I set it up. I'm pretty sure that's it. Okay. Well, then, certainly if I want to buy some high-quality merchandise with the Vinland Old Time Radio logo on it to impress your friends and family. And pick up chicks. Cafepress.com slash Vinland Old Time Radio.